He always yesterday. looks good. He makes a big effort to look good. He's ours. I'll there have we to go. Get you a he's in. He's in the. Oh. He's in the blue room. There we go. Can I'm we not hit? wearing a jacket. Sorry. I apologise. I was just. I was just sitting chilling actually, with my. You dog. look awesome anyway. Very handsome as always. Oh uh, well, yes. That's because I'm stress free. <laughs> 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 I was just saying, Trevor, I was mentioning about Foxy before. I said he's done more for Sussex than the Duke of Sussex and the Duchess. Oh, yeah, Foxy's good. He's yeah, about, like Foxy. about every day with his camera. Do you know what? I will be on. I know Foxy's watching. See, originally, when I watched his videos, I thought I thought it was a piss take or a parody. I thought, really? And, and then, because the way he goes about things, he's so elegant in the way he does things. I thought, no one's like that. He's like, he's like, a male lady C. <laughs> He's very quintessential, isn't he? He's very good. Yes, he is. Yeah, yes. you look at it initially, you think, what? And then once you get into it, it's brilliant. It's really good. Yeah. Oh, good. So how are you? How are you, Graham, today? I'm all right, mate. I had a, I had a message from the hospital, in, in, uh, and they said, what did I expect them to say? They said, oh, well, it, it's still there. Have surgery, have surgery, and I think, oh dear. So I've got to go and see the doctor in Jib next week right, and have a look yeah. at the scans and that and make oh. a decision whether we're going to have surgery or not. So that's where we stand with that. Ah, Graham. We're at that. Do you know what? It doesn't, I, I've worked this thing out. It doesn't matter what you drink, what you eat, what drugs you take. It does not matter anything at all. No one gets past 100, right? So that's the cutoff, right? <laughs> that's the cutoff. Yeah. So yeah. all it is is it's getting past 50 and between 100, everyone goes. And if I'm still here at age 100, I want someone to kill me because there's no way I want to be pushed around in a diaper where I started off my life shitting myself. I would no, rather no. Just go. I'd you rather just go. You do, you're right. You look at these people who make it to like 99 and you think... Some of them carry it off better than others, and you think it's time to go, mate. In it, I'm not afraid of dying. I mean, I've, I've got cancer, all right, but I'm not afraid of dying. But it's just when, isn't it? You'd rather yeah. be le further away than than sooner, wouldn't you? You know, if that's what we all we, we know we've all got it coming at some point. But yeah, yeah, because I'm exactly. sixty. I'm sixty-one. I'm. I don't consider myself to be old. I know, I know I'm an old senior citizen on, on the list. You get free bus passes and things, don't you? But I don't feel old at all, not at all. So if I make it to 70, I'll be happy. She always pulls faces when I say things like that. So basically, so, so you don't class 61 as old, but if you make it to 70, you'll be happy. That's a bit... Well, that's, that's, it, it's the biblical phrase, three score years and ten, isn't it? I don't know. Well, no, nobody knows, do they? I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think 70 is very old. I it's don't think not, 70 isn't it? is old. You feel ripped off if you go before. What Fiona, what Graham's actually doing is this. He's going, I don't care what prize I get, I'll just see where I hit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he we used to say he used to say 50 was old when he was 37. He'd say, oh, I'll be all right if I make it to 50. Yeah, but when I was young, you look at people who are 50 and you think, Well, they're old, aren't they? All the teddy boys were 50 when I was young, you know, because they, they grew up in the 50s and things, didn't they? And you think Oh, man, well, I look that bad when I get to 50. And then when you get to 50, you think, well, I feel the same as I was when I was 20 and 30, you know? You don't look the same, though. I mean, you used to have her. <laughs> you used to have her, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I, I, did. Watched your, I actually watched your 30-year reunion. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Well, it, it goes on a bit. That's why I'm doing it in little it 10 does, minutes. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if you're not into it and you haven't done it, you won't really appreciate it. It's like a load of soldiers talking in a reunion, isn't it? And if people haven't been in the army, they don't know yeah. what he's talking about. Interesting, though. No? Interesting. But then, um, are I'm you getting a veteran's ID card? Uh, I've I've heard I've I've seen it, but should I get one with the amount of fraud I've been accused of? I don't think I deserve one. I don't think I deserve one. They, they might say you're not entitled to one. I don't know. <laughs> I'd get one just to just just to, just for spite. Do you know what? I don't I don't I don't want I don't care. I mean I've got hold on I'll show you I've I've already got this card which which is better I think. 
I've got them. Um, I'll hide the bits and pieces, but on it. But I have, I have this card which says that I am a war pensioner. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've I've had that now many years. But then um, the veterans ID card was the thing brought in by Johnny Mercer. I didn't think he would achieve it, but he did do it. And uh, so far, uh, he's done he's done a good job. Um, so you know, things. Th D Ream used to say, things can only get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. Uh, but it, yeah, I was looking at it the other day. It was all come up on Forces News. It was in some Navy base. They were, they were the, they're printing the first ones off and handing them out to the veterans, you know, and it just said veteran, you know. So you can get it out and show it, people. I mean, I don't know how, how much you can, discount you're going to get from McDonald's or whatever with it, but... You could make one with a colour printer and a laminator. Let's be honest. You, you could. Oh. You could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depending like, on what uh, you put on it, you can uh, get in a lot of trouble. Well, exactly. Sure. Yeah, there, there's loads going on. Yeah, I just yeah. So, what's what's your plans for the weekend? Anything good? Sleeping. You know, I've been, we've been quite lazy lately. Haven't we? we haven't really done anything. I've been uh, yeah on the six. So I've been taking it easy. Yeah, we're, we're going we're going to the local restaurant tonight. So I've got a yeah. friend down. He's 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 from Belfast actually. He's an ex-airline pilot, so we've been invited to go meet him and his missus, so we're going to go in there oh, good. and meet them. So. The, the, the big question for me, Trevor, is do you think you'll ever upload videos on X? I don't know. Um, the truth is, my lawyer at the minute uh, is dealing with... My lawyer at the minute is dealing with the allegations made against me in the Sun paper. My lawyer is dealing with the Sun for printing that malicious lies. My yeah. lawyer is my lawyer is dealing with the person who reported me to the son and my lawyer is dealing with the same person who did this who has several twitter handles that slag me in fact the person who's been slandering me non-stop actually is called on twitter trevor cold mc uh, i know oh. who, i know who it is i know exactly who it is my lawyer will be dealing with that with a letter going to twitter legally using the police to get the ip address of that individual to link him to several things and i will not go on twitter until this person is prosecuted and when he is prosecuted i'm going to destroy him all over the media and every other asshole who shared his tweets who thought he was correct i am going to make sure that that, that i I'm, well i'm going to make sure that i hold everyone to account especially yes. Especially quite a few people in the veterans community who think this person has been telling the truth when they've been making up lies about me. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, the person that did this, Fiona, originally reported me to Suffolk Police for fraud. Suffolk, yeah. Police, car Suffolk Police carried out their due diligence and had to investigate it. So now when this person says, the same person says, Trevor's been investigated for fraud, that's true now, but it's because of that individual's allegations. He will yeah. not, he is, uh, it's now classed as severe stalking and obsession. And I just want my lawyer to deal with it before I decide to come on anything. At the minute, I find Twitter for me to be toxic because of this one individual who has several Twitter names. Yeah, for, well, yeah, yeah. And you, <coughs> you could block those accounts. And I, I don't think you should be bullied off Twitter because I won't. I won't. And well, you have a lot of people who would support you on there, same as on YouTube. I, yeah. I understand that, but I was bullied off Twitter. And I I find whenever I was on Twitter, I found it to get into my mental health. And I used to have dips because only because of Twitter. Yeah. But um, as I said, uh, as soon as my lawyer issues a statement and deals with this toxic individual, I'll be able to move yeah. forward. Uh, but I have to wait out for the legal guys to do their It's terrible, people. isn't it? That all somebody has to do in this day and age is make an allegation. Exactly. And, um, mud and you know what makes mud it worse? Thrown, mud stuck. It's awful, you know, isn't it? Do you know what makes it worse? The journalist from The Sun, his name is Joe Haddon, when he turned up my door last Friday and asked me all these questions, I didn't shy away. I answered his questions. I then said this was all rumours. I said, this was made up by an individual, blah, blah, blah. He says, can you show me? I gave that journalist a copy of the police report, which proved that all these allegations were false. 
and he still went and printed it in the sun, which is now why my lawyer is going to sue the sun. We have yeah. proof. I've yeah. also, and the stupid, do you know what the journalist did? Well, how stupid he is. I was all playing on my phone going, oh, I can't find it. Oh, I can't. Oh, here's it here. And I had a screenshot of the letter from Suffolk Police. So the idiot said, oh, give it. I'll, I'll send it to myself. So the idiot went on my phone, had my phone in his hand, and he sent the screenshot of the police report to his own mobile. So that is proof from my lawyer that he knew the truth. Before right, he yes. yes. So he knew the truth before he printed the story, and he still did it for clickbait. How so, old was this journalist, rough, more or less? He would have been, I reckon, 23 to 25, not that old. Young journalist up and coming. He has inexperienced, inexperienced. He has messed up because he had the truth on his phone. He read it in front of me. It was on his phone and it was on his phone for four days before he printed a story. So my right. my lawyer is like brilliant. We've got them bang the rights. Good. So yeah. That's very good. Yeah. I've took the Daily Mail to court before today and they just paid. And the mirror. But and... they don't care because they've had the headline. Yeah. They've had oh. the picture. They've sold millions of papers. They've made the money and they just got, got to give you, like, well, there you go. Well, do you know what? It's one of them, the Daily Mail. Uh, I said this before, but the Daily Mail, uh, the defense correspondent for the Daily Mail is a guy called Mark Nickel. And Mark Nickel um, spoke to me on the phone. And it was, was it Friday? Monday? It was Monday after the story broke. Uh, and he called me up and he goes, Hi, Trevor. Um, just to let you know, that individual that gave the story to the son came to us first and he spoke to me and I wasn't happy with, with the story and I wouldn't print it. I thought I'd be better speak to you first, Trev, and find out what's going on. Mm. And I said, well, I said, Mark, I appreciate that, thanks. And he said to me, is this the old historic stuff that you were reported for before? I went, yes. He says, is there any new stuff? I says, no. So this person keeps doing this? I went, yeah. 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 Mark said is to me this. This is what Mark said to me. Well, tell you what, Trev, um, deal with the police, deal with it legally, uh, prosecute the person, and then the Daily Mail will write a story about the troll and the hatred that you receive. And I went, thanks, Mark, I appreciate it. So whenever I get this all dealt with by the solicitor and the legal team, I'll then throw everything at him. And I'll only do it with him because he stood by me. Yeah, that's very so, good. I mean, in a way, if the newspapers were intelligent about their marketing, a story about a victim of a troll would resonate a lot more with the readers, I think, because who hasn't had a troll? Wow, yeah. Well, I've been getting trolled now for, what, five, six years, non-stop daily. You, you've only got to go on Twitter and look at the hatred. Bye. The hatred's all directed by this one individual. Yeah, but they're specific accounts. I'm aware of the accounts, but I never go and look at them. Um, yeah. I'm going down the roads of getting the individual prosecuted um i know they have their own house so i know they've got assets that we can take from them uh yeah but the other thing that i think is 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 vitally important is not just getting them put in jail but getting them sectioned under the mental health act for the obsession and of years wow. that 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 is the direction that i would like my lawyer to go in yeah, 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 I suppose that will be a decision for the courts, won't I? I don't know. I don't know because they'd probably be likely to be more lenient in court if he's if he's a loon, you know what I mean? Mm, but it's only no. a doctor, only a doctor but, can say that. Well, you're right, only do and a doctor would say that. Uh, the doctor would say that this individual is now on his fifth wife, he, I think he's about to get divorced. Uh, but this is an obs a guy who is more obsessed with different people and attacking them and trolling yeah. people than he yeah. is in his own relationships. That's why he keeps marriage, divorce, divorce, divorce. Div I mean, this is a guy with serious mental health issues. It's who an obsession, is isn't it? It's a mental illness. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, so he feels more in control of his um, persona as a troll than he feels in control of his real everyday life. Yeah, I, I I believe that, Fiona. But, you know, it's no excuse for trying to destroy someone's no, life. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever you're getting up in the morning, whenever you're lying in bed at night time and you're thinking about Trevor Colt, how can I destroy him? And you wake up and you tweet about me. And then an hour later, you tweet about me again. And then at yeah. lunchtime, you've made three other tweets. By tea time, you've made 12 tweets about me. At night time, you go to bed tweeting about me. And you're doing this daily, daily, 30 yeah. days, a month, 12. Yeah. And you're doing it for years. 
it, 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 it resonates the fact that it's quite scary, the fact that this person has an obsession with me. Yeah. And it's freakish, really. You know, it is like, wow, you know, strange, isn't it? But Unwanted attention, But for they've sure. not come to your house so far. They've not. No, no but, no, but I have their address sitting right here. <laughs> right. I Trust me. When someone trolls me and they're that obsessed, I, I, I will go out of my way to find out what I can about them. So then I have something in the background where I can use towards legally. I mean, yeah. I was able to give my solicitor the other day um, the guy's name, address, postcode, email, phone number, so we can start putting things together. So my solicitor's fully aware of who this individual is. And mm -hmm. we are we're going to hit back, I mean, 10 times harder than we've ever been hit. And, and yeah. but I'm, doing it, I'm doing it legally. I'm not printing stuff online. I'm not mentioning names. I'm not attacking or destroying their family. What they've tried to do to me, yeah. I want. I want to use the law at its best. And um, for the last four and a half years, if I'm honest, I've ignored them. And I didn't seek legal aid. I didn't seek legal representative. I didn't seek lawyers. But now that I've got the option, and uh, I've decided that let's just let's just deal with this. So there we yeah. go. Someone yeah. at Free Speech has just asked, why is this individual obsessed with you? I'm guessing it's because you're a celebrity. And well, the more famous you become or the bigger you become on YouTube, the more likely to have this well, type of problem. Fiona, um, this individual used to live about 400 metres from me, probably less. And I once did a, I was asked to do a talk about, about Afghanistan in my local pub, which was called the Boardwalk. And I did it. And there was a lot of people turned up for me to talk about it. And this individual was there with his wife. At the end of my talk, his wife came up to me and said to me, uh, Trevor, I've got a husband here. He's, he's ex-military. He suffers big style. Do you think you can speak to him and help him out? And I did. I went and sat with him, had a coffee. Next day, met up, had a coffee. This went on for months. I was meeting up every day, have a coffee chat. We got to know each other quite well. Um, I then said, at that time... I was going to put together a CIC, like a community interest company to help veterans. It was my plan. So I got in touch, I got in touch with a company called OHM Clothing, and they made like veterans for us veterans stuff. And every piece of clothing I received, I ended up giving away to people anyway. I give it away, never made a penny from it. And I gave him like a, a, a big fleece jacket, shirts, jumpers, hats, he had everything, all three. And then I took him with me to the MOD to meet General Richard Nugi, the Chief of General Staff, to talk about veterans. I took him with me to the House of Lords during a PTSD resolution fundraiser, and he met loads of people. And then mm -hmm. I got, an, this is what happened. I then got an invite to um, Downing Street to talk to Theresa May about veterans. And I, I happened to tell him, you can't come with me. And he went, why? I said, because this is about British veterans and you're not a British veteran. And he went, well, I, his wife then started attacking me on Facebook that evening. Right. I blocked her. I just blocked her and I went, whoa. I went around to see him to say what's going on. He answered the door and he said to me, get the F away from me. Who do you think you are? Blah, blah, and slammed the door. Boom. And I'm like, whoa, what's just happened there? Anyway, th this is what happened. It kicked off. He then sent emails to OHM Clothing saying I was a freak and a fraud. He sent messages to Matthew Marsden. By the way, all, all these people I'm talking about have written statements to back me up. He sent a message to Matthew Morrison to slag me off. And Matthew sent me a message back. Going, have, have you seen what's happened here? And I went, no. He then sent an email to Andover Radio Station to say, Trevor's scum, this, blah, blah, don't get him on. He then sent messages all over the place. He reported me to the Charity Commission to say, Trevor wanted to see ISD. He was a thief, blah, blah, blah. He then sent, he then reported me to Suffolk Police for fraud. Non-stop, had to go through years of investigation. Now, tell me if this is obsessive. He then bought shares in the boardwalk, my local pub and then barred me from going in it. You're right. I mean... You're right, Graham. <laughs> God. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's been obsessive. It's been obsessive, and it's been going on for four or five years, nonstop. Every couple of months, he'll report me for something. And I'm like, what? So I am constantly under different investigations because of his allegation. It's now severe stalking. And that story in The Sun last... Uh, sorry, on Monday, was his story about me. And more proof, more proof. I yeah. can't, but I've now got, I've now got a catalogue of events which my lawyer has, and we are yeah. going to go for prosecution. It's got ridiculous, and um, I think it was the fact that I was the first person to get him out of his shell 
that whenever I whenever I wanted to walk away and do things, he couldn't. I bet you regret me. that now. Well, there we go. He wouldn't let me go and do things myself. Graham and I have had the same problem, not to the, quite to your extent, but there were a couple of people who we sort of lent money to. We helped them get a job. Uh, we invited them into our home. I actually cooked a big banquet roast chicken dinner and they literally spoke to me like I was dog shit. Do you remember? And we just sat in yeah. silence. Around the dinner table, we thought... They, they, by Star David, he said, I suppose you don't like human beings wearing that piece of crap round your neck. You know, he's in my home, I've at my table, I'm cooking him dinner because they had no money for food. And eventually, um, Graham and me and Faith and Ben all just went goodbye. You're blocked on social media. Yeah. We don't want to know you. You're um, not coming back. <laughs> they, they started a stalking campaign yeah. against us straight away and it went on for three years. He broke the window oh, at night, four o'clock in the morning, smashed Ben's yeah. window above his bed. He, I wow. woke up and he was standing at the foot of our bed in the middle of I the went night. Running out. I, mean... I went running out in the dark and grabbed him, banged him against the wall and there was loads of screaming going on and we said, right, because there was too many people there, witnesses, and I thought, Let's just call the police and have him nicked. And uh, I don't You've know what happened. Nothing the police never him. got the police, back to me. The, the police, police never got Spain, back to me. The police in Gibraltar, they both pulled him in, him and his girlfriend, and said, you've got to stop this. They wouldn't stop. They wouldn't yeah, stop. Yeah. They wouldn't stop. They kept going. Um, I mean, I spent hours and hours in the police station. The most important thing, if anybody is being bullied or has a stalker, is keep a diary. And what I did yeah. was I would email myself with a, a heading of what this guy had done. And I printed yeah. it all out, gave it to the police, and they were like, whoa, we can actually see the, the gaps between the episodes are shortening, and it's accelerated. And they put it in a graph, and it got really serious. And the yeah. only way we could get rid of him in the end was he started to stalk someone we worked with who'd never met him. And she came to me and said, do you know this guy's name? I said, yeah, he's the, like the company stalker. He's been making, because he didn't know where Tim and Conchie live, but he knew where Graham and I live, so he took it all out on us. And um, my boss paid £800 for a solicitor's letter, which, quite frankly, was absolutely useless. I had to rewrite the whole thing, uh, cataloguing all the things he'd done and saying, you're basically going to be arrested and go to prison. And it stopped. Yeah. Finally, it stopped. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Remember Alex Belfield? It took him years and years to get him to court, and he got five and a half years for stalking. But he was doing it in his own name, not anonymously. Well, Trevor like, knows who this guy is. We're not going to say his name, but Trevor knows but who he is. These... The police know who he is, and there's a long history. The guy's looking at but five and a half years. Viewers, people, in, in my opinion, people outside of Trevor's situation don't know who's behind those three troll accounts. Trevor does. The yeah, police yeah, do. Yeah. But viewers, you know, onlookers don't know. Whereas well, Alex was doing it in Alex's name, wasn't he? Or, or yeah. was he doing it anonymously? No. He was uh... doing it. <laughs> as, far as I know, I, I don't know about caught. Alec, but um, was um, yeah. All I can say is car karma does come around. People trolls think they are protected, and and uh, yeah. they're not. And uh, it, com it everything comes to an end. In fact, the best thing it's I know, even though I found the story in the paper on Monday to be quite fucking embarrassing, I found it to be embarrassing. I was red when I seen it. I was fuming, and I went I really. Know, yeah, yeah. But but in the same term i spoke to people um and they were like wow this is this is great news trevor because now now this is out there in the open this is proof that you're constantly being stopped so and the thing is the story in the paper all added up to the original allegations made against me everything was the same so it's from the same person so my solicitor being able to put them together went we've now got this guy so all i'm waiting on now is action from my solicitor and i won't let him rest i texted him yesterday i texted him this morning let's get this yeah. sorted i want this and we've got the sun bang the rights for printing a story which they knew wasn't true it's incredible isn't it it's almost yeah. as if they do it to the little guys because they think well they've got no money i won't get sued there's no consequence mm. let's just print a story that's that's not true well to be fair fiona and i will say this the amount of subscribers i mean i've got some really i mean the amount of emails I've had from subscribers saying, if you need money to prosecute, I will give. I've had dozens of, I'm like, whoa. And I've went, no, I don't need any money. I'll do it this way. I'm not a massive YouTuber who asks the common public for a pound each and I need 40 yeah. grand. I mean, I've seen YouTubers do that. And I'm like, yes. really? <laughs> yes, really? I have. Look at the site. You've got nearly half a million subscribers and you're asking people for a pound? 
I yeah. see you. And then, and then go, then take a holiday to Las Vegas. I find some YouTubers <laughs> to be disgusting that do things yeah. like that. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know but, what you uh, mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why? Why would you do that? Doesn't make sense. But um, you can find ways around it. Uh, you get your you get your solicitor to start digging deep, get the right stuff out, hit the right channels, and you and you can put a stop to it. It's taken me a long time though to do that. Um, and I only done it truthfully because I do want my son going to school and people going, ah, your dad did this. Yeah. That's, that's where I draw the line. And do you know what? I will sue anyone that goes against my family. It's just, it's, I have to protect people around me. I yeah. don't mind getting called names, being slagged off, but when it affects my family, then, then I have to, I have to put a stop to it. Yeah. Especially kids. Especially yeah. kids. And, and I hope he doesn't have any repercussions from it. I really do. <clears throat> Sometimes, no. they do, but you know. <laughs> I find with kids, they usually get to the piss out of you one day and they've forgotten the next day, you know, put onto something I else. I know. It's just, it's know, just sad it's that it gets to that where, where lies seem to become lies and click. If it's, it's repeated mean. often enough, yeah. then it starts to become a fact. It really starts to stick, doesn't it? Mm. Well, well, and that's, why, that's why you've got to nip it in the bud. You've, you've got yeah. to sort it, you know. Yeah, yeah. All the bullying in schools that's been going on, and the teachers won't do nothing about it. Yeah, you know, I saw in the Daily Mail constantly. that apparently 22% of parents have taken their kids out of school for homeschooling because nothing is done with bullying. And that's exactly um, why we took our two out of school. I know a lady, uh, I know a lady who, uh, whose husband um, took his life, and oh. I speak to her every couple of days, actually. Um, but um, her son is in high school, and he he gets bullied quite a lot by people saying, "Come on, come on, why don't you do what your dad did?" And it got it got to that stage. It got to that stage. I mean, it's it gets to the stage where I feel like going. In, uh, it's it angers me that, that that these children think that's okay, and and it gets to the stage where he didn't want to go to school anymore. He was pretending to go to school. Yeah. And, and and teachers don't do enough to to, to protect kids. Yeah. Oh oh, don't get me wrong. Teachers will protect an LGB flag on their wall. Teachers will protect <laughs> bullshit, but they won't protect the lives of the children. Now, yeah. it, a guy that's being bullied like this comes way below the fact that John wants to wants to become Claire. That's priority. Yeah, yeah. Whose mental health's more important? Well, they're following trends on social media. That's what yeah. they believe is important. Yeah. And I think they're very misguided. Yeah. There's a lot of misguides around right now. Yeah. There certainly is. There certainly is. <laughs> you, you've got to stop your free thinking. <laughs> and don't you be saying truth and facts on YouTube. If I've warned you once, I've warned you a hundred times, you're going to be taken uh, down talking did, truth well, like I, that. Well, I, I showed you... I'm not going to talk about it yet, but I showed you the email I got from YouTube last night. Yes. That's, I that's saw weird. the video that you did. I won't say, you know, the private one you sent me of what you did yeah. in Suffolk. Yeah. I think that's awesome, and I can't wait <laughs> to see you make that public. But I understand why that's private, because obviously you've got lawyers and stuff going on, so, you you know, it's all bolstering up your case. Well, I've I've had permission from the police uh, now twice to record conversations between me and the police, and I've recorded them and I've held them back, and um, my, uh, I've sent them on to my lawyer though. My lawyer's got them, so yeah. my lawyer now has my lawyer's got a chain of events. There's now a paper trail to see that I've been doing everything legally throughout Suffolk Police to try and put a stop to allegations, mm -hmm. and the police the police have carried out nothing but inaction to prevent this. If anything, I said to the police, you're actually assisting my troll by not stopping yeah. them. Uh, Emboldening so them, making them feel more confident. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In the old days, a cop would go and lean on someone and tell them to pack yeah. it in, wouldn't they? Give them a thick ear. A, when I grew, up in Bar I grew up in Ballybean Estate on Donald in Northern Ireland, and we had, a, we had Harry and Ken, the two local bobbies. I tell you, I used to boot you up the hole. They were like, oi, they'd grab you. And, but no... Like here, and walk you home to your parents, and your yeah. parents will, your parents will, your parents would open the door, and they wouldn't say what do you do to my kid. 
they'd say, oh, sorry, Harry, what's he done now? <laughs> and you're like, what? Get in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The shame being dragged on. It's happened to me by two coppers, you know. The mother's there at the door. Oh, my God, the police. You know, oh. the shame, and you're like, fuck up, you know, and you don't do it again. Exactly, exactly. It's all good. Right, listen, listen, my wonderful, my wonderful YouTubers. I am going to go and score things away with my little boy, but that it's been wonderful. For, thank you for having me on your channel. It means a lot. Thank you for coming on, Trevor. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Have a wonderful definitely. day, and I hope your channel goes from strength to strength. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Cheers, mate. Bye. See you next Bye. time. Bye. Bye. Yes, he's very positive thinker, very upbeat, and a fighter, really, isn't he? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, if all the people you could pick on in the world, why would you pick on an ex-soldier? <laughs> why would you pick on someone like you Trevor, know? who's so determined <laughs> and so positive? Or, or perhaps that's yeah. what drives the troll I crazy. Don't know, I don't know. Bullies uh, usually pick on weak people, don't they? My mom, Easy target. My mum always used to say that the bully doesn't stop until they've received the punishing blow. Yeah. Not, not a blow, the punishing blow.